Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can work with events inside of Unity and to have actions occur on those events, such as clicking on a game object, inside of both scripting and inside of the inspector. So what you were seeing right there was trigger actions for two different events, one of which is on mouse down, which refers to having your mouse be clicked while it's hovering above a game object that is calling that method. In that case, it was the big bad enemy game object I had over here. I modified the spawner script a little bit with on mouse down so that when you on mouse down click, it spawns a copy of a game object at that position. The other event that was triggering was down here on this game object at the bottom, which we should really be calling a deletion zone for the sake of clarity. Uh, basically deletes any game object that comes inside of this zone. It's box collider trigger and uh, it just deletes it. So this deletion zone is using a event called on trigger collision 2D and the spawner script and the game object is using on mouse down. Now there are also items like UI components including button and toggle which will have uh, different events that can trigger such as on click events and toggles will have on value changed and we'll talk about how to implement those in a little bit. Beyond that, you can also set up something called a Unity event to create your own custom events, which can add delegates inside of the inspector as well. But that'll be a more advanced topic for a future video. So let's go ahead and start with talking about how to script actions to occur on some basic events. So in a previous video, I had the spawner use this update method, which was if input.getKey down, it would basically spawn the game object attached to the script at the location where the mouse was pressing. Now this method private void on mouse down ties into the overall unity event system and any mono behavior can use methods like this. So it works very similarly rather than having to write if input dot get keyed down we simply create a on mouse down method and you can notice that if you start typing in visual studio on uh, you'll get a lot of different events which you can have stuff happen when those events occur. And all you need to do is basically implement one of these methods and then you fill out what happens when that occurs and that's really all you need to take care of. Now, although there are quite a lot of events you can implement just like this, um, there are going to be some limitations. So for first off, on mouse down requires you to actually be hovering over the game object in question. Because when on mouse down checks, it checks if the ray from the mouse click actually collides with the game object itself. The previous implementation where I just checked if the mouse button was down or not doesn't do that. It's slightly different. So you do have to keep those in mind. And that's also one reason why implementing your own Unity events can be pretty useful. But just to keep it to the basics here today, on mouse down, uh, once again, it refers to when you have a mouse button pressed down and you are hovering over the game object. So in that case, it's going to call the same functionality I had up here, which gets the position of the mouse cursor. So instead of pixels, it's going to be the same coordinates that all of these game objects share rather than the canvas UI. And then it just finds that position, sets it equal to the same Z position, which is going to be zero rather than the Z position of the camera and spawns the game object there. So very simple. Uh, but over on the deletion zone, we have private void on trigger enter 2D. Now there's a couple things to note about this event. One is that if you do on trigger enter, there's one that says 2D and there's one that is actually 3D. The 3D one is just on trigger enter. And the reason you need to differentiate those two methods is because 2D colliders and 3D colliders don't work together. So if you're working with 3D colliders on your game object, then you should be using on trigger enter. But if you're working on a 2D game with 2D colliders, whether that's a box collider 2D or a capsule collider 2D, uh, you should be using on trigger enter 2D. The other one to note is on collision enter so on collision enter is referring to when two objects that are allowed to actually have physics collisions collide with each other so that would be two colliders that do not have the trigger box checked so when i'm talking about the trigger box i'm talking about right here on a collider there will be a check box for is trigger so if you have is trigger checked what actually happens when something bumps into it is 
the collider itself will completely let whatever is colliding with it through. It only triggers events. So uh, if you uncheck this, then those two items would be able to interact in terms of physics. So it might be able to bump into this ground here and not allow it to pass in terms of physics. But if you leave is trigger checked, then anything can pass through it. It's only going to respond to on trigger enter events. So if you are going to be working with collidable uh, colliders, basically ones that don't have trigger checked, then make sure you use on collision enter or on collision enter 2D. Uh, you also notice that there are exit methods in correspondence to these. So if you have on collision exit, that means when the game objects stop colliding with each other and on stay is while those are colliding with each other. On trigger enter has the same methods as well. So there'll be on trigger stay and on trigger exit as well. So with that aside, <laughs> what the actual code inside of here is very simple. If it collides with the game object, which would require it to have a collider attached like a box collider 2D, it simply destroys that game object or to delete it from the scene. It doesn't delete the prefab, it deletes the actual object inside of your game scene. And that's important because if it was deleting the prefab, then that would delete out of your assets folder and you would never be able to instantiate it again. But don't worry about that. It's just the game object in your scene, which would be in the hierarchy somewhere. So I'll play this one more time and you can see how the events work without actually implementing a lot of effort. Uh, of course, the reason why these game objects are falling is because I added a bit of gravity scale to a rigid body 2D. Um, so they are able to fall here. And you notice it doesn't actually interact in terms of physics. It just deletes it as it enters into this box collider, which is what you would expect from a trigger collider rather than a collider that does not have trigger checked, where it might be able to bounce off of the collider or something else of that nature. So beyond custom scripting functionality to happen when events occur, you can script a method, basically anything you might want to call that would return void, and you can attach that to the functionality of, let's say, a button UI component. And those components, of course, you can create by, say, right clicking on a canvas on your scene, going down to UI button to create a new button. Okay, and uh, usually you only want one canvas, so be careful about that. I'll delete that canvas there and just make sure this button is under the canvas as a child. And then you can add in delegate methods to these events. So certain events are exposed in script to the inspector, which is very useful because now what we can do, rather than having to, um, let's say, write in a script on button clicked, what we can do is just create any method we want to call and maybe we call it in many different areas in our game but we can have it run that method in this case when the button is clicked so uh, one thing we could do for instance here is to take this panel so i'm going to drag this panel game object and i'm going to go down to game object here so the game object here is a script that's embedded inside of every object in your scene every game object and we can set that to active, which means in the case of a UI component, it's going to be showing. So let's actually move over to that UI. Uh, okay, so in order for that to show, we have to enable the canvas, of course. Um, but if you enable and disable the panel, it's basically opening and closing your menu. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out now. So when I hit play, we have this button showing on screen. I click on it the event triggers and all of the delegate methods I've attached to that event trigger, which in this case is setting the panel to active and opening up our pretty messy menu. But the important thing is it worked, it shows on screen. Now, uh, while I was getting this to work, I do wanna point out, it's important in your scene that you have this event system object, this defaults in every scene as far as I know, and event system in standard input module, I think is the event system that you need to care about. These button events like on click are only gonna work if you actually have an event system script inside of your scene and it's enabled. So uh, if you see event system in your scene, which should be there, uh, make sure this component is enabled if you're having any issues there. The only reason it was disabled for me is I was testing things earlier and I created a mess for myself. So anyway, so anyway, the button has the method attached to it now. And what's great about it here is you can easily attach as many uh, callback functions as you want to happen um, from basically anything in the scene. So if you have an audio source, you could, um, let's say, grab the audio source script and tell it to play whatever sound effect is on top of it. 
Um, now obviously there's no audio clip here, but if you attach the audio clip and an output mixer group, that would be able to play a sound when you click on that. So you can see how being able to expose uh, the events to the inspector is really useful, and that's what Unity events do. So Unity events, there'll be another video about how to set those up so that you can have events trigger on whatever you want to happen. And that's pretty much it for this video. So hopefully you guys learned in this video how to interact with events at a basic level and how to attach events to things like on clicks or on value changed inside of your Canvas UI components. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. I've been Chris and I will see you guys in my future video content.